Hi guys, welcome back to another video of this ArcGIS Pro tutorial series. If you haven't checked out the other videos of this tutorial series, you can access the entire playlist by heading over to the description of this video. And today we're going to talk about styling raster data. And to demonstrate that to you guys, I'm going to make use of a digital elevation model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my DEM or my digital elevation model simply by dragging it and dropping it onto my ArcGIS workspace. And as you can see, it immediately zoomed me into the correct location or to the correct geographical extents. And this will happen for you guys as well, depending on the coverage of your Rust dataset. And right over here, you can see that the color scheme that we get by default is this gradient color scheme, which varies from black to white with extreme black colors indicating lower elevations and the whitest spots basically representing highest elevations. However, especially when talking about elevation data, this sort of a representation might not be the best for us to quickly grasp an understanding about how the elevation basically varies over the landmass. So what we can usually do is we can right click over here and open up the symbology pane. And, and from here we can actually go with a number of different color schemes. Now, before I go ahead and pick a color scheme that I think would be more appropriate, I would also like to take a couple of minutes to talk about these different types of methods by which we could symbolize our layer. By default, you can see that the stretch method is actually selected. And what happens in this stretch method is that it stretches the values along a color ramp, as you can see right over here. When we refer to this particular color ramp across these color scales, different elevation values are being represented using this stretch method. And let's go ahead and maybe pick a different color scheme that might be a bit more representative when it comes to showing the or differentiating between the highlands and the lowlands. I think to get started, I might go with a color scheme like this. And immediately you could start seeing the differences. Now, if you feel like you want to invert the color ramp, that means instead of showing the highest elevations in blue color and the lowest elevations in red color, if you would like to flip this entire color ramp, which makes the highest elevations appear in red color and the lowest elevations appear in blue color, you can quite simply do that by hitting this checkbox right over here. So if you invert, you can see that immediately you start seeing these lower elevations in sort of a purple color and the highest elevations in red color. Now, depending on your case, you might not really be interested in seeing certain parts of this raster. For example, you can see that when it comes to the coverage from this raster, the majority of the area is basically ocean. And if you would like to sort of hide that, what you can do is you can basically go ahead and apply a mask by heading over to this tab right over here. And if you check display background value and set the background value to be zero, and just like that, you can see that you now start seeing only the parts of the raster which corresponds to these land areas and the remaining areas. Well, a color has been assigned to those remaining areas as well. And that color happens to be basically transparent. So that's the reason even though there is a color, you don't really get to see that color. At the same time, if you would like to play around with the transparency of this particular layer, what you can do is you can head over to raster layer from here and that will open up a completely new ribbon. And from here, you have the possibility of playing around with the transparency. For example, if you increase the transparency, you can see that you kind of start seeing the layer underneath because you're increasing the transparency of the rust layer. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to increase the transparency. I'm just going to set it to be zero. And now let's go ahead and check a couple more other options when it comes to how we can symbolize our raster layer. So let's say if you were to go with this discrete option instead of stretch, you can see that it says it groups the data based on a selected number of colors and applies a color scheme. So let's go ahead and click on this. And when it comes to using the discrete color renderer, well, it's used to display the values in the raster dataset using a random color depending on the color ramp that you choose from this list. And it's actually quite similar to this unique values renderer that we are also going to talk about in a minute but it's way more efficient when there's a large number of unique values in your raster dataset because unlike this unique values method, when using discrete method, it does not really calculate how many unique values exist in your raster dataset. And the discrete color renderer will basically assign a color to each unique value until it reaches a maximum number of colors that you choose. 
So what we can do is maybe we can go ahead and play around with these different color ramps as you can see from here. Well, for this example, let's go ahead with a color ramp like this. However, again, something to keep in mind is that depending on the type of dataset that you're using, some of these rendering methods might not really make that much sense to use. For example, definitely the stretch method. If you're talking about elevation data, definitely it makes sense to use this stretch method because you know that it's basically stretching the elevation values from low elevations to high elevations. However, if you were to go with a method like discrete for elevation rasters, it might not really be the best method to use. However, there are so many cases where this discrete and unique values cases might be actually relevant to use. For example, if you're talking about something like a land use raster, this discrete and unique values method are definitely going to be the type of methods that you should be using. And with that, let's go ahead and see how this classify option basically looks when applied on a raster dataset like this, which you could use as classes in order to specify certain elevation ranges. Now, for example, let's say if I were to go with 10 classes instead of five, you can see that the resolution when it comes to getting this color scheme applied over a number of different ranges increases accordingly. And what do I exactly mean by these ranges? You can see that this bright yellow color now refers to all the elevations that are less than or equal to 18.64. And everything in between 18.64 and 56.6 is being represented by this shade of yellow. And everything in between 56.6 and 92.4 is being represented by this shade of yellow, which almost looks like orange and so on. So again, as you can see from here, we can actually change color scheme depending on what we are looking for. For example, if I were to go with a color scheme like this, you can see that the lowest elevation classes are now being represented by red color and the highest elevation classes are represented by blue color. However, if you would like to invert this, you also have the possibility of doing that simply by right clicking over here. And if you click reverse ordering, now you can see that the lowest elevations are basically represented by these bluish colors and the highest elevations are given by these reddish colors. And you also have the option of choosing a number of different methods by which you would like to have these breaks or have these intervals. Now by default you get this natural breaks method but as you can see you have a quite number of different methods for example you can go with this quantile method and when you do that you can see that the intervals by which the assignment of these classes happen is quite different to the previous method or you can go with equal interval and with equal intervals what happens is that it basically takes into account the lowest value of my raster and the highest value of my raster and depending on the number of classes that I specify over here, it basically splits that evenly among each of these different classes and assigns the value accordingly, as you can see from here. So the sheer difference of values when it comes to when we move from one category to another is going to be exactly the same when we move from this category to the next and so on. And not only that, if you head over to histogram, you can see basically how that splitting has happened so you can see that as long as we are under this equal interval method, the magnitude of the value range that are being represented by each of these color patch is going to be exactly the same. However, let's say if I were to go with another method like geometric interval, you can see that immediately the interval assignment changes accordingly. So this histogram and the classes, they're basically just two representations of the same thing. From histogram you can visually see how the break occurred and from here what you can see is basically the actual number and the corresponding label that gets displayed right over here which you can change if you wish to do so for example if you feel like you don't really want to have multiple decimal degrees in this case or if you would like to just round this up to 13 you can see that accordingly the label that gets displayed right over here changes as well even though we didn't really make changes to this upper value what we changed was just the label and when it comes to unique values again it's going to be quite similar to discrete method however in this case it's going to be much more rigorous when it comes to how it assigns the colors as it tries to assign a unique value for each of the different raster values that it can find throughout the entire raster and that's going to be a bit of a taxing process on your computer as well however from the perspective of an elevation map again it won't really make much sense 
to use this sort of a unique values representation for elevation rasters but again as i mentioned to you guys if you are using this for something like land use or land cover rasters then it perfectly makes sense to use this sort of a representation i'm also going to talk about this shaded relief which creates a 3d representation of the surface with the sun's relative position so if you go with this option you can see that it basically created this kind of a 3d representation with this color scheme by default and you have the freedom to make a couple of changes for example instead of going with traditional you can go with multi-directional hill shade type and when it comes to scaling instead of none what we can do is we can basically go with adjusted and if you increase the z scale factor let's say if i were to go with 10 instead of 1 you can see that the different elevations basically start to pop up a little bit even though we didn't really make changes to the actual values the z scale factor option can be viewed as something that's quite equivalent to a vertical exaggeration option where you could vertically exaggerate the elevation values by a given factor which basically gives a much more dramatic effect all right guys so that's pretty much it for this tutorial it was a quick tutorial showing you guys the different options when it comes to styling raster data and i hope the tutorial was helpful for you guys if you do have any questions add a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you would like to stay tuned for this kind of interesting gis tutorials as well i'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon